can be an event, it can be a disorder, it can be an idea, it can be a place, it can be a gathering, it can be any number of things. But if it comes on really strong, then you've been ignoring it really long. Hmm. And you just need to sit down and you need to just be what is called in Sanskrit, sunya. Sunya means that you are deeply sensing, deeply sensing, and you are just there to experience the sensation of the experience. Hmm? Form no opinions, draw no conclusions, just absorb, absorb, and observe. When you do that, what will happen? is that the brain will stop being the most influential, the head will stop being the most influential brain in your body, and it will begin to share time with your heart. And your heart is an interesting feature in addition to the fact that it's always pumping blood into your body. It's also your leverage point, because this is actually what, when you come from your heart, You gain the advantage of leverage. With just a small effort, you can move a large amount of emotional, psychic, even physical weight. So leverage is that the amount of lever that you have, greater than the amount of lever that the, the force, the opposition has, that amount of lever demonstrates how much less you need to work with. For example, if you have a room of a thousand people and you have 17 people that are all totally in their heart, 17 people will be able to get all 1,000 people to follow a heartfelt activity and love it. But if you get 17 people that are all in their head in a room of a thousand people, they just disappear because they're just like everyone else. Hmm. And the heart doesn't have language, doesn't have words. The heart doesn't speak in words. The closest we can get to the heart in words is poetry. Why is poetry the closest that we can get to the heart in words? Because poetry leaves out words. Correct? Mm -hmm. Poetry leaves out words, which is what is so liberating about poetry. Poetry allows you, poetry allows you to use your own words. But what else doesn't have words? What's worth a thousand words? A picture is worth a thousand words, so the heart actually will communicate in pictures, in symbologies. Mm -hmm. And when you're experiencing those symbologies and you're really believing and knowing those symbologies, you can walk up to someone and with very few words, you can gain access to their heart. And once that takes place, you're one. And as long as in that union, you don't try to manipulate it unless it's completely benevolent, meaning a benefit to everyone. As long as you don't try to manipulate, you can remain there. Not only can you remain there, but you can guide the evolution from there. And that's what we have. Because what we're doing is we're adding levity to the gravity. And suddenly, that advantage that we have gained makes more sense. And do you know at that point, it doesn't matter what words you're using because that's not what's causing the effect. What's causing the effect is the tone. 
-hmm. of your voice. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that your brain can figure out. This is not something that you can think about. Let me think about that. Well, when you think about it, you'll go away from it and you will draw conclusions that make no sense to you. But if you don't think about it, what ends up happening is all those sort of dark squiggles, those checkerboard squiggles, that's just the nature of social stuff happening around you. Consider it like smoke in a smoke-filled room. You walk through life and all that stuff happens around you. And of course it influences you, it affects you, it penetrates you, it holds on to you. And if you're in that heart, con continuously exuding from your heart, then that stuff will get neutralized. But if you think about that stuff and try to analyze that stuff and try to figure out who's to blame for that stuff, <laughs> that stuff gets nourished. Has this made any sense? Yes. You're all sitting there kind of going. <laughs> Are we here? Yes. Are we with it? Yes. Does it make sense to you? Yes. Does it ring a bell? Yes. Does it sound a lot nice? <laughs> Yogi Bhajan, this was actually a copy of Yogi Bhajan's art. He said... When you see a person, you will either see the nut, which is all of this stuff around, or you will see the fruit, which is the person, which is the self inside the self. When you're experiencing this, what is that drawing of, the nut or the fruit? The nut. And what you have to do to get down to the fruit is you have to forgive the nut. You have to release the nut and allow yourself to come into that nourishment in the relationship. And if you can do that, some, are, some events are easier than others. It's called recapitulation. Basically what it is, it's a re-accounting for the events of your life. And it's an important, important meditation that we do just before summer because summer is the time of, of growth capacity. And what the nut is, is the nut is the, is the seed that is not germinated. It's the shell still on the seed. And the, cell, the shell still on the seed of all of your relations, your relations can't grow. And you don't need the person present. The person doesn't have to even be still alive for you to recapitulate the relationship. And the best physical focus for recapitulating a relationship is the diaphragm. Because the diaphragm crosses the solar plexus and the solar plexus is what holds on to. Don't you know that when something happens really harsh with a relationship you feel like it's a punch in the gut? Mm -hmm. isn't, that what, isn't that what is often expressed? Mm -hmm. And that's because the solar plexus, the uh, diaphragm crosses the solar plexus right here. And the solar plex is the root of your emotional body. The majority of your emotional body is held outside the vessel. Only a little bit of your emotional body is held inside the vessel. And so what we're going to do as our first exercise is we're going to focus on the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is the largest muscle mass in the body. And just think of it like this. Think of it like this. Mm -hmm. That it's this kind of oval, flat disc 
and it's going to be moving down when you inhale, and it's going to be moving up when you exhale. And we're just going to get simple here. We're just going to sit with our hands facing upward. We're going to close our eyes. And we're going to begin to breathe long and deep. 